Hi, I'm Malachi Grepp, owner, CEO, engineer, all that other good stuff. I don't know what I am today, but I'm going to be something. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to be setting up this Phoenix WLAN wireless access point. I want to say thank you to Neff uh, for getting us this product and letting it u letting us use it to demo. This is a good product if you want to turn anything into wireless, essentially. So if you want to have wireless access to your PLC for programming, or if you want to have a valve bank or robot be able to communicate to this thing, I wouldn't necessarily do any high-speed communication uh, with this particular device. It's not that I can't handle it, but it's just kind of a, a newer technology, and, and you just may want to test it and have that uh, in practice first. But it should hold up to any, any Wi-Fi type of standards that are out there. Um, in a past video, we had set up this thing as an access point, and today we're going to set this thing up as a client. Uh, it's very simple and very straightforward. It's very similar to the way we did the setup on the last device, but I wanted to go ahead and run through this real quick and show you where there may be a little loophole where you may make a mistake and think you don't have it set up properly. So we're going to go ahead and jump into our computer screen here. All right, so you can see here in our screen that we have our... Uh, internet access now this internet access is already portaling through our wireless uh, client right here so this device is already communicating back to our wireless access point uh, basically the, the wireless access point is not even an industrial access point it's just a standard access point in our office um, but we're gonna go ahead and reset this thing uh, I'm not gonna necessarily do a factory reset just because I don't feel like dealing with it right now but in order to do a factory reset, remove power, apply this 24 volt signal to the back right here. There'll be a factory reset terminal, and there's also a diagram right here on the back. So all these come with a diagram that tells you the 24 volts, the zero volts, and the factory reset terminal. Um, you'll need an RJ45 to RJ45, and I'm connected directly into my computer, so that way I don't have to worry about anything else on the network, worry about crashing anything, anything like anything along those lines. So we're going to go ahead and come in here and we're going to change our properties to a static IP address. So I currently have this set up as 192.168.0. And I think we're just going to go um, 202. If I'm not mistaken, the factory default for this wireless access point is set to a .20. Uh, so it's 0.20. It may be 1.20, so try that out if, it, if the first one doesn't work. Um, so we're going to set that there. Also, when you do a factory reset, your wireless will be completely turned off and you won't have access to it at all. So we're going to go ahead and open up our web browser. We're going to type in 192.168.0.20. Like I said, this is the default IP address, I believe. When you come into here, uh, you'll be logged out. So you won't be able to actually access anything really. You have to come over here to your login. It'll bring you to this page and your default password and username. Uh, your username right there is admin. Your password will be private, P-R-I-V-A-T-E. And these will be all lowercase. Now that we are logged into the F-W-L-A-N, Tell you it's a weird name now that we're logged into this client here this access point it's a client today okay you need to come into your WLAN settings and then you need to activate the WLAN interface so go ahead and check that and then hit apply that'll turn on the Wi-Fi signal or the ability to receive a Wi-Fi signal if not you won't have any uh, ability to have uh, wireless access at all and they send that out as a factory uh, default so that way there's no security issues with somebody being able to hack into it prior to uh, somebody doing the setup on it. So if you apply power to it, essentially anybody would have access to it wirelessly if you didn't, if that wasn't already turned off whenever it came out of the box. So now we're going to go into the WLAN interface. And uh, this may be set to access point out of the box. I do not recall what it's set to out of the box. But... If you're going to connect with a uh, Phoenix device, I think the FTB works fine. And I think they work a little bit better uh, together if you're using another Phoenix device. But you don't necessarily have to do that. If you already have something that's existing, then you can utilize that as well. Um, it's recommended that you use this MCB or the SCB for a client if you're communicating to a device outside of the Phoenix network. 
So we're going to select MCB. And then another thing that you can do is using the scan function. Now you can manually punch in your SSIDs and your, uh, your pass key and what kind of security method it has. But uh, when you go to scan and then click scan again right here, this will give you the ability to uh, scan everything that's on the wireless network. So now that this thing is turned on, it is now able to look for wireless signals the same way your phone does whenever you hit the wireless button. Uh, so as you can see, the alien.net popped up. I'm not going to worry about necessarily selecting one of these, but hit the abort button. And when you hit the abort button, what it'll do actually, it's a little misleading if you ask me, uh, it will actually shove those settings of that access point into here. So that way you don't have to manually punch anything in. You don't have to worry about having any errors. And something that I also want to point out, if you haven't done any networking before, the SSID is cap sensitive. So if this uh, N was put in, punched in as a lowercase N, it will not function properly. It will not give you access to the network and this will not connect. This bar up here, when it's gray like this, this also indicates that you are, that your wireless access is turned on and that you have now connected with whatever wireless network that you need. After you apply and do a save change, if you do not change your IP address, let's say first we come back into drive right here, we no longer have access. Uh, no access to the internet, nothing's working. And the reason for that is we still have our ethernet, uh, hardwired ethernet connection set to our static IP address. So we're going to go ahead and for this particular application, just set this to a DHCP automatically obtained IP address. And we're going to do that because we have a DHCP. We're going to OK it. It's going to identify. If it identifies ap appropriately, you shouldn't really have to do any testing past this, but it will say uh, whatever your network's name is right here. So whatever your Wi-Fi signal's name is, uh, will populate right here in this Ethernet tab. Then we are going to go ahead and go to the drive. Uh, I'm not going to click on the drive because there might be some sensitive information there. But we'll go to YouTube. All right, so as you can see, YouTube loaded. There might be some sensitive information there too. You never know. But uh, hopefully this video was useful for you guys. Hopefully you got this thing set up nice and easily. It's a very easy device to set up. Like I said, you can set it up super, super quick. And our objective on this channel is to be able to speed your setup process and show you the capabilities of the different devices on the market right now. If you'd like for us to walk you through how to set these up or if you'd like us to s install these on your machines, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, we'll install these on existing pieces of equipment, any new equipment that we do. Uh, it's kind of something we're using as a standard just because I think it makes sense for everything to have wireless capabilities, whether you're going to use it within the, uh, a system or you're just going to use it for programming. It makes a perfect programming port. Um, if there's security issues and, and, and companies are worried about having a, a, an open network on a system, you can turn the Wi-Fi off and then just re-enable it whenever you go to do your programming. So, for example, maybe you don't want to be right up against the control panel while you're doing all your programming. So you plug into your, your hardwired RJ45 port, you, you log into this, you turn on your wireless access, and then you can log in through Wi-Fi now and go sit at a desk somewhere or just be at a more prime location. I know a lot of times where main enclosures are at is not always the best view side of the cell. Uh, that's one thing that I really find useful for these. And then also like with Fanic and a lot of other uh, devices out there, you're having web interface capabilities. So with this, you can go wireless and then you can log in to, to like Fanic's uh, web user interface and you can see the digital inputs and outputs and and a lot of that stuff is just like great whenever it comes to um, doing commissioning and debugging and and overall just deploying a system so like I said guys if you want us to help you install one of these or if you want us to install or if you'd like us to look at some type of robotic application for you or a mirror application that's what we specialize in and we're here to support you in any way that you need um, business card at the end and thank you guys for watching I'll catch you on the next one